Good Tuesday afternoon. Thank you for hopping on NCSA Live. Next college student athlete, I'm David Kamisic, uh, joined today by one of our directors of regional recruiting, Danny Koenig. Danny, happy Tuesday. How are we doing, bud? Well, I'm doing well. Happy to be here, as always. Excited to uh, get to this topic because, you know, it's about coach communications and how to get that process started. So, um, obviously, we want to take some questions here at the end, DK. I'm always excited to see what the people have. I want to acknowledge that we're out here on Twitter. We're out here on Facebook and YouTube Live. So uh, today we're talking about how to prepare for coach communication. Uh, we just want to make sure that you know the NCAA rules about coach communication. Uh, first and foremost, you got to understand your sports recruiting calendar in order to take advantage of that. Um, and then we're going to go over some pointers on how to prepare for coach communication. We do want to get to those questions here at the end. So if you have questions, drop them in the chat box. We want to get to those. We want to help you guys better understand the process. So, DK, this is something we talk about all the time, right? It kind of goes hand in hand with being proactive, you know, how to prepare for coach communication, making sure you're on the radar, those sorts of things. So um, what are we actually talking about when we're when we're talking about the NCAA rules surrounding coach communication? Yeah, so the NCAA obviously has rules in place for student athletes and, and certainly for their college coaches as to when a coach is able to communicate with the student athlete. Um, depending on the division level, depending on the sport, there are different dates. Uh, most of the time that comes typically between your sophomore and junior year when the floodgates open, so to speak. But um, a lot of different rules. We'll, we'll certainly break those down here more specifically. But really, to start things off, obviously, recruiting has been majorly impacted by COVID uh, over the last 14 months. And really, for these past 14 months, Division I schools haven't been able to have student athletes out on campus. They haven't been able to go out and visit. Uh, a lot of Zoom, a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails. Um, so an important date coming up this summer, Danny, that I think is going to really be an aggressive summer when it comes to recruiting and, and the coach communication and coaches being out and about. But um, effective June 1st, this is when the dead period ends for Division I schools. So all these coaches are going to be able to be out, um, be out and about again for the last 14 months. They've been sitting in their offices, sitting at home, uh, not being able to go out and evaluate kids or see kids in person. So first and foremost, this summer is going to be a huge um, pivotal part in the recruiting process. But the end of the dead period, I think, is really going to uh, signify something important uh, this summer. Yeah, it's uh, I don't think we can overstate this enough. I, I think we're kind of at a watershed moment where we are going to see floodgates open up and things are going to go crazy here this summer. At the end of the day, that's a really good thing, uh, but it's kind of been pent up over the last 14 years. So June 1st, June 1st, excuse me, that dead period for Division One coaches is going to open up and you're going to see communication like crazy. Um, you know, the other thing that we're dealing with still regular recruiting rules, uh, June 15th for a lot of our rising juniors at this point, um, division two coaches are going to be able to reach out at all, uh, for all sports. And in some sports, uh, at the division one level, June 15th is going to mean something for these rising juniors, our current sophomores, uh, some sports, it is September 1st of junior year. So, uh, you have a couple of months to try and get on the radar, identify those schools of interest. But, uh, if you're an athlete out there, that has not taken this time in the last year to find those schools and put your information in front of college coaches. It's just a really good starting place. And that's something you're going to need to do very, very quickly in advance of this June 1st date when college coaches will be able to have that direct communication from the division one level, or if you are that rising junior, that June 15th or September 1st date. So NCAA recruiting rules really designed to limit the amount of communication that athletes can receive from these coaches. Uh, it's really an effort to, to prevent early recruiting and early offers. Uh, but ultimately for the athlete, this is about making an informed decision about where you want to go to college and then basically make sure that that coach knows that you exist and that you're interested so that when those contact dates do open up, when the summer, you know, those floodgates open up and communications are happening, that you are hearing from your top schools of interest. So one of the things we've done at NCSA, we've com uh, compiled this comprehensive guide to help you better understand when you can expect to hear from and receive these coach communications based on your sport and desired division level. We'll drop a link in here for you guys to check that out. Definitely encourage you guys to check out that guide, but that's a starting place DK for these guys to at least get a recruiting profile together and start to push their information out towards college coaches at schools of interest. Yeah. I think a big misconception in recruiting is these coaches, they can't start directly contacting student athletes until these certain dates, depending again on the sport, depending on, the division level, but that doesn't mean the coaches start their recruiting process when these dates hit. 
coaches, they'll begin to identify kids eighth grade, freshman year, and begin to build that list of recruits so that when these important dates come, if I'm a college coach and this summer, June 15th, is when I can start directly contacting 2023 prospects, I've been doing my homework, my due diligence over the past two years, building a list, you know, sending out questionnaires, camp invites, looking at videos, looking at transcripts, beginning to build a list of, all right, when June 15th hits, I'm going to start calling some of my top prospects. Who are those top prospects? Who have I identified? Who have I evaluated? Who have I um, kind of marked as student athletes that I really want to get on the ball with recruiting early? So again, the recruiting process doesn't start junior year when these dates hit. There's a lot of legwork that can go into to place earlier in the recruiting process. And again, as early as eighth grade, student athletes and families can be doing things. They don't need to be waiting until coaches contact them. They can be proactive. They can begin researching schools. They can begin evaluating, you know, what division level is going to be best for my athlete, ensuring that they're on the right path for the NCAA eligibility. And again, as a student athlete, Danny, one of the most important things to do early on is to be proactive and reach out to schools. There's no restriction in terms of if you're a freshman in high school, you can email a college coach. You can begin to get yourself on coaches' radars in anticipation of these dates, knowing that hopefully by the time your junior year comes and these dates hit, you've done the research or you've done the connecting that you need to early on to start getting some of those phone calls. I think that's something that families don't realize, Danny, and they don't necessarily take advantage of. All of a sudden, junior year hits, and they're thinking, all right, time to get going with recruiting. But again, a lot of things are happening freshman year, sophomore years for student athletes. And again, coaches taking a look at kids earlier and earlier. Two more great points that I can't overstate enough. First and foremost, even though college coaches cannot communicate their interest to you just yet, and primarily that's going to be with the Division One and Division Two levels with those restrictions, just because those coaches can't reach out to you doesn't mean that you cannot reach out to those college coaches. You can always contact a college coach and let them know of your interest. You can send them your NCSA recruiting profile. You can fill out a questionnaire. The importance of that piece in this process needs to be highlighted. And that is something that I expected as a former Division I recruiting coordinator. I was looking for that kind of interest from student athletes and that kind of maturity to have them reach out to me and express their interest. So first point. Right. You can always reach out to a college coach that is something that is encouraged and expected by college coaches. They're going to put a little star by your name if you're organized in that way. And, and again, the second thing is that this process does start a lot earlier than you're going to expect it, especially at the D1 and D2 levels that despite their inability to, to express their interest in you as an athlete, it's still extraordinarily competitive. And on some level, it's a business. So these coaches are going to start reaching into that eighth grade and freshman year classes. They're going to be evaluating video. They're going to be reaching out to your travel coaches, your club coaches, your AAU coaches to learn more about you as an individual, as a human, what kind of uh, promise you might have as a prospective student athlete. Are you doing well in the classroom? Are you a coachable individual? Right. So when that date opens up for me personally, I probably started recruiting that class about a year and a half in advance of that contact period. When that contact date hits, massive explosion date of communication from college coaches towards their top schools of interest. So for instance, uh, before workout that morning, I'm clicking the button at about 5.30 in the morning to automatically send out about 3,000 emails to student athletes that I had identified through NCSA's network as athletes that I wanted to express my interest to. Along with that, I am making phone calls all day and the rest of that week to my top prospects. And in many, many cases, those are athletes that have found their way to me, said, coach, interested in your program. I want to be on schools, you know, on the East Coast at the division one level at a program that offers business at a high level and give me internships in New York City. Great. I want to be on the phone with you that day saying, look, very interested Keep me updated on your swimming times this summer. Here are our official visit dates coming this fall. When can you get to campus, right? So that date, when communications opened up for me as a Division I recruiting coordinator, I'm on top of it. And I know what I'm doing, but that process realistically started for many of these athletes in their freshman year or the summer after their freshman year because I needed some time to be able to figure out who that was, do my research. And then, of course, in the meantime, I'm coaching a program. You know, I'm trying to make a program uh, better and, and win a championship that way and produce All-Americans. So there's a lot to consider in that. Um, but I think the message is here, David, is that you got to get this process started early and you need to take those proactive steps forward on your own to let 
those coaches know to ensure that they have your information that they know of your interest in advance. Yeah, I think the worst thing families can do is kind of just sit back and wait and hope the coaches find them. Certainly that does happen in recruiting, but the more that a family can really take the bull by the horns and and, and take that initiative, um, that's what's going to really maximize the opportunities and get coaches' attention, uh, like Danny said. So it's obviously important to know the different periods in the NCAA recruiting calendar. You know, understand how you should be getting recruited at that point during the year, depending on what that is for you, but also the kind of coach communication you can expect to receive. So we talked about as a freshman, I can email any college coach in the country that I want. But if I'm emailing a Division One or a Division Two school because of the rules the coaches have, they can't personally respond to me. They can send some generic information, a questionnaire, maybe a camp invite, but those D1 and D2 schools cannot directly communicate with me until that certain date hits, which again typically is June 15th or September 1st between sophomore and junior year. For Division Three, for NAI schools, for junior colleges, there is – uh, no restriction. Coaches can talk to you freshman year, sophomore year throughout. Um, but again, as Danny mentioned, typically the D1s and the D2s are a little bit earlier in the recruiting process where the D3s, NAIs, and junior colleges are maybe identifying and evaluating the kids a little bit later, seeing you know who kind of falls through the cracks or who isn't getting maybe that um, Division One or, or Division II uh, attention. But as a family, again, start your outreach by gathering information that you're going to need to include in your coach communication. Danny, you talked about that NCSA recruiting profile that you used as a coach. And that really is a great one-stop shop to have your recruiting information, your video, your transcripts, your, your stats, your measurables, your times, all that information can really be found. And that's something that you can send to coaches so it has all their information so they can really properly identify you, evaluate you based on um, the accolades, based on what you've accomplished thus far as a student athlete. Yeah, and that recruiting profile is someone that anybody out there can start, right? It's a free online recruiting profile. It's a searchable academic and athletic resume for every coach in the country. And as you look at athletic departments and budgets shrinking and budgets, uh, you know, maybe being altered due to COVID, programs getting cut, I think a lot of college athletic directors are very conscious of the money that they spend. So this is also a free platform for college coaches to use. And for me, it was a very easy way to put in these preferences, say, look, I need smart kids that can balance themselves. I need kids with a 3.5. I'm looking for athletes in these certain areas, you know, these certain strokes, distances, whatever it was, um, you know, evaluate video, those sorts of things, reach out to coaches. And that's all things that can go on your NCSA recruiting profile. Now, conversely, if you're missing some of that inf information for me as a coach, you're not going to show up in those searches for me as I go through NCSA system, trying to work through tens of thousands of these athletes to build that championship roster. So, you know, when you're talking about communicating with college coaches, don't forget to include a link to that NCSA recruiting profile so that those coaches can know more about you um, and also have your contact information. So a couple things that you're going to want to get on there right away. Highlighter skills video. You know, most sports out there need to be able to showcase their ability before a coach is going to commit to actually going and seeing them in person. Again, time, money, energy to be able to do that. Those coaches are very calculated. So highlighter skills video is going to go a very long way. Athletic stats. Let them know what you're capable of doing. So verified third-party statistics from a combine or event, right, that, uh, you know, those coaches know that you're out there, but that it's a legitimate, not just a hand time sort of thing. Um, academic information, GPA, right? I want to know your weighted and unweighted GPA. I want to know if you're taking honors courses and challenging yourself in the classroom. I want to know what you want to study, right? If I, if I have a good business program at my school, I'm going to sell that to you right, as a selling point for the entire package, not just for athletics. So uh, GPA, ACT, SAT, what you want to study is going to be really important for that profile. Contact information, right? If I have the best looking profile out there and an athlete that's really, really good and an athlete that I want to reach out to, if I don't know how to get in touch with them, if that information isn't on your recruiting profile, I just kind of throw my hands up. You know, I'm not going to go scouring Twitter and Facebook for your recruiting information and contact information. So uh, make sure you put that on there for college coaches that want to reach out and express some interest to you. Uh, and then, of course, where can these coaches find you? A schedule of where and when you'll be competing, camps, combines, showcases coming up this summer. Coaches are always trying to make plans for that. And if they can be effective with that and they know they want to go see you and can work that into their recruiting budget and their recruiting travel plans, uh, it's a great way for you to be able to put that on the recruiting profile to let those coaches know in advance what your plans are in hopes that they're going to be able to come and see you in person. So, you know, a lot of considerations here, DK. Ultimately, let's just strip it down. 
start an online recruiting profile. That is how college coaches are identifying and evaluating prospects. Take some time, even if you're an eighth grader freshman, to just start compiling information to be able to put on that recruiting profile. And then, of course, you have this responsibility in the recruiting process to figure out what makes sense, right? Have those conversations with coach and your parents about what these preferences are and what makes sense for you. And then you have to run searches through our system to find those schools that make the most sense for you. Raise your hand and say, coach, I'm interested in your program. I'm interested in your program for these reasons. And then always ask the coach for something. Can you send me more materials on the business program? Can you put me in touch with someone in financial aid? When can we set up a time to talk? So I have questions. I want to. I want to talk to you. So, um, you know, contacting college questions is obviously something that families are asking about every day, and coaches do have their different methodologies for scouting out new talent. But you know, there is a lot of common denominators that we're talking about that any athlete can engage with, and really should start this process in their freshman or early on in sophomore year. Yeah, I was talking to John Puglisi, one of our team uh, edition directors recently, and he said he was a former college coach, D one, two, three for basketball. He said only once did he ever show up at an event and discover a kid that he didn't know that he wanted to recruit. Every other event that he went to was very intentional with his purpose. Either kids had reached out to him, they've identified kids, they'd evaluated kids. So when they go, went out to these events, they knew who they were there to watch. They weren't just going and saying, all right, let's sit back and watch court five and see if anyone stands out. I mean, right. Right. That's where the importance of this coach communication is so critical for student athletes. And again, don't wait until junior year to do it. Junior year is when it can be reciprocated from college coaches. But again, take the initiative early on. And you don't need to know all the answers. You don't need to know what you want to study. You don't need to know where you want to go to school or what your division level might be. The more you can cast the net out, spread that net wide, have options. If you can have 25, 50 coaches knowing who you are by the time you're hitting your junior year of high school, that's where things are going to start getting, right? I think the worst thing, Danny, is junior year hits and these dates hit and all of a sudden it's quiet. You're not getting any emails. You're not getting any phone calls. You're not getting any texts. And that's where recruiting can become stressful and, and panicked. And, you know, you want to have options junior year and you want to be able to narrow those down as you head into that senior year. So you can kind of have that victory lap. And the only way that typically happens is by doing again, the due diligence early on by taking these steps so that the coaches know what's going on and they know when to communicate with you. Because if they're not interested, they're not going to communicate with you. That's right. Yeah, but you got to let them know in advance. So uh, I want to get to some questions here. Always interested to see what comes across. Could be about this topic. Could be anything uh, related to the recruiting process here. So uh, let's see what we got. This one here from Christy. Do colleges usually respond to emails? If you get a response, even if it's a short response, is that a good sign that the coach is interested? Um, first part of the question, I always responded to an athlete. Regardless, right? You never want to burn any bridges in that way. Uh, so my practice was to always respond. I wasn't going to just, you know, leave somebody hanging. If I wasn't interested, I was just going to be honest because I don't want to waste that athlete's time. But in terms of like the content of that, you know, what they're responding with, um, some very common things to kind of gauge a coach's interest. First, if they ask something of you, right? If they're saying, hey, uh, fill out a questionnaire right? Which means you go to their website, you go to the athletic website, you go to that sport. Everyone is going to have a tab for recruiting or a questionnaire where you're basically putting your recruiting information into that coach's database so that they can track your communications, right? Uh, that's something that you could be doing proactively, but if the coach is asking for something like that, uh, do it, right? They're trying to gauge like, hey, is this person willing to take five to 10 minutes, uh, you know, to really solidify their interest for me? So coach is asking something of you. Um, that's a good way to kind of gauge interest. Uh, if they ask you, uh, more about your competitions, up to upcoming competitions, camps, those sorts of things. Or if they ask you for video, they really are just trying to learn a little bit more. So yes, to a degree, there is some kind of interest. And David, I, I'm interested to hear what you think, but I would think anything outside of, uh, no, we are going in a different direction is is okay, right? You, you've left that door open. Yeah, and then selfishly for, for the NCSA profile, the great thing about it is you can see when coaches have opened your emails or if they've viewed your profile or if they followed you. Like That's a really good indication. I think you have to think about, too, how many kids are emailing a college coach, right? Some of these programs may be getting hundreds, thousands a week, and does a coach have the time to spend to go through that? Danny talked about when he's in season as a coach, he doesn't have maybe as much time. He's got to focus on his team and the development there. So it depends on who you're sending that email to, right? Are you sending it to the right coach? Right. If it's a football staff and they have 15 you know, coaches on their staff, is it going to the right person? So, again, the NCSA profile can really help 
direct you in terms of who you should be sending that to, but then it also gives you the opportunity to see, okay, has that coach opened my email? Did they watch my video? Did they follow my profile? Those are signs early on, but um, I'm guessing, Danny, that not every coach um, was as generous and thoughtful as you in responding to every email, but um, again, that's selfishly where that NCSA profile can really help eliminate some of the uncertainty by just sending out a bunch of different emails to coaches and maybe hearing back from some and not from others. But um, sure. again, a little, little, well, the little only other thing I'd add to that is like, it's busy, right? If you're in season, if you're out on the road recruiting, like it's just busy and sometimes things slip through the cracks. It's no malintent, right? I might be interested or wanted to have responded, but it, you just kind of got lost in the phrase. So a simple follow-up coach, still very interested. You know, I would love to set up a time to talk or whatever it is that you're asking of that coach just to re-engage them. And, and, you know, maybe they come back. Oh, I'm really sorry. You know, I was out here at this event, this and that. So don't think that if you don't hear back right away that you're not of interest to those programs. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of reminding that you're still out here and still interested. Persistence is key for sure. All right, we've got a question here from Ann. It's a good one. Does an injury hinder an athlete from being recruited? Danny, it certainly can. Uh, depending on the individual, but it doesn't mean that it's because you're hurt. You shouldn't think about recruiting or stop your recruiting process. It's still a lot of things you can be doing to to kind of offset the fact that maybe you're not playing right now. I never coached a season where I did not have an athlete injured. It's just part of the deal. And even though you have the best intent, the best trainers out there, the best game plan, stuff happens, right? So that's just part of athletics. And for me, an athlete being injured in their sophomore or junior year and maybe not getting that highlight tape or you're not being able to really be out there and do what they do, that doesn't detract from me from the recruiting process. My big concern is how that athlete reacts to the injury because uh, coaches love, you know, trying to tease out through adversity what these athletes are willing to do get, to get back on track. So it's not necessarily the injury that I'm worried about. It's the response, right? Did that injury take you out of your sport enough to no longer be interested, right? Are you discouraged by that? Uh, do you just totally remove yourself, right? Those are the things kind of underlying as, as a prospect that I'm actually, I can use that injury to start learning more about you as an individual and some of your drive. Conversely, I have seen some athletes that have taken an injury and taken that opportunity and really impressed me as a recruiter, right? So, uh, you know, girls that are on crutches that are still showing up for practice, cheering on their teammates and being of service to that coach. You know, maybe they're taking times and helping out the team that way and still learning and being in the environment. That to me, you know, that response to that injury maybe speaks more than any statistic or video ever would because now I know I'm getting an athlete that's passionate about their sport and is going to give back when they've fallen on some hard times. So um, it's not the injury that is going to derail me from recruiting an athlete. It's about how they respond to that injury and what I'm learning about that athlete through that process. Yeah, and if your response from a recruiting standpoint is doing nothing, that's not going to obviously benefit you. You've probably got to be a little bit more proactive and be more active in recruiting, knowing that, again, you're not on the field, you're not playing your sport, and not getting that opportunity. Um, question here from Keenan. Do camps generally get these kids noticed? What are your thoughts on seven on seven camps? Uh, college camps specifically, they can be helpful in the recruiting process, um, but they can also be money grabs for universities where they're just sending out you know, thousands of camp invites, hoping to get kids to come and you can develop some skill and, and kind of get a college experience a little bit. Um, but if you're going to go to a camp, be proactive beforehand. Get your information out in front of that school before you show up because typically coaches are there to really recruit or evaluate a potential recruit if they know who they are, not necessarily just hoping to discover someone. So again, if you are going to a camp this summer, or showcase a tournament, be proactive beforehand. Get yourself known by coaches before you show up versus just showing up and again, hopefully you know, standing out or getting that coach's attention. Otherwise, that can maybe be a a little bit of a waste of money, which um, we certainly want to hopefully have you guys avoid. So um, Brian's got a question here regarding some of the, the dates, Danny. So if a junior now D1 and D2 can't offer until June 15th, um, the word offer is throwing me off. They can't directly contact you, but there are backdoor ways where kids do get offers sophomore year, freshman year, even eighth grade in some sports. Well, if you're a junior, they can have contact, right? Juniors have been able to be on phone calls, emails, text messages, FaceTime. Really, that D1 um, dead period that ends June 1st, 1st is just 
face to face. Yeah. Right. So offers have been able to be made since last summer. A little bit strange, right? It's a little bit of an atypical recruiting cycle because of COVID. But abs- if you're a junior, and I would assume this means rising senior, you've been able to have those conversations this whole time and being able to field offers since last summer. If you're not having those communications or you do not have indication that these coaches may be offering you, if not a scholarship or roster spot, something's got to change. Like now, like yesterday. All right. It doesn't mean that it's all lost. We just got to get you back on track. And that's really what we excel at here at NCSA. So uh, for that particular question, please reach out to me. I'd love to have a conversation with you guys about what you're doing, what you may not be doing and try and restructure this so you can get on the radar. But um, yeah, any junior or rising senior can have that phone call, email exchange, FaceTime with a coach, and they can offer you scholarship at this point. Yeah. So, um, and Michael had a question that kind of relates. So how early can a recruiter coach reach out to a junior golfer? Uh, It doesn't matter on your age. It's just all about your grad year. So again, if anyone is a junior right now, it's fair game. Every coach in the country has been able to reach out to you really since last summer. Um, And again, for the 2023s, the incoming juniors, the rising juniors this year, again, that June 15th and September 1st dates uh, are going to be the important ones where, again, the floodgates can open. Well, and wait, I want to point something out here about this. That is the only way these coaches have been able to recruit in the last year, right? So we're, we're taking camps out of it. We're, they're not traveling to events. They're not coming to high schools anymore. They are computer phone recruiting strictly over the last year, 100%, right? So if knowing that that's been their process here in the last year, if you're not hearing from those coaches by now, they don't know that you exist or that you're interested. So like I said, something's got to change in that regard. Again, be proactive, reach out. All right, we're going to take one last question here. Um, Corey's got a question. Um, he's got an AAU program. Um, he's a former player, now turned coach, um, trying to get kids recruited, trying to get them looks. Um, if you're a coach and you're watching this, Danny, what advice would you have for a high school coach, an AAU coach, a travel coach trying to help his kids out? Coach Haywood, I got you covered, right? I work with coaches every day. I've been to AAU events. What I do on a day-to-day basis is I set coaches up with free resources to help you track college coach interest in your athletes, right? So shameless plug here. NCSA Team Edition is a portal for high school coaches, club coaches to log in. You can start free online recruiting profiles for all of your athletes. You can make sure they have access to that, right? Once those athletes have accepted your uh, invitation to that team account, you can see how they build that profile. You can put highlight tape up there for those athletes. You can see which college coaches are interested in those athletes and how they're interacting with that NCSA recruiting profile. You have the contact information for every single college coach in the country. So if you wanted to start opening up pipelines on behalf of your student athletes at schools you know they're interested in, you can do that, right? So that's it. Team Edition is a really cool way for you, coach, to be able to engage in this and help your athletes. Um, somehow I'm going to find you and I'm going to get you my contact information because I want to have a conversation with you about this. Bang, there you go. Hit me up on the Twitter. Appreciate that, Jim. Throwing up my contact information, reach out to me, right? Shoot me a quick DM, say, hey, when can we chat? I will set up an account for you. It's free for you guys to use. And then we can worry about getting your athletes involved so you can gain some oversight into the recruiting process. Yeah, it's, question. Really, it's really a different approach, right? I think most coaches kind of have the mindset of, I'm just going to go to tournaments, go to tournaments, go to showcases. And um, again, that can be very time consuming, very expensive and doesn't always get the results that you do. But again, an online profile, an online platform is going to be accessible to coaches all across the country. And as you mentioned, it's great for coaches to be able to log and follow along their kids or nudge their kid. Hey, this coach looked at your profile. Why haven't you reached out to him? Get on that. So uh, obviously a big part of, of what our team and, mission does. And don't get me wrong. Like, I think the fact that we've got coaches out there that want to help their athletes is absolutely brilliant. About five years ago, we had this realization that coaches really did want to be involved. Make no mistake, coach, this is not your responsibility to get your kids recruited. You're there as a resource and, and sort of a consultative position, right? But stepping up to the plate for your families and your athletes to say, look, I want to explore this on your behalf. I'm going to set you up with some resources is absolutely brilliant. But just like we were talking about early in the show, those athletes, if they want to go on and compete in college, like, look, our eligibility is done, man. There's nothing we can do. If they <laughs> want to do this, they have to take some steps forward, but you do have resources to be able to help them. Yeah. And again, some coaches are very active in the recruiting of their kids and others don't do anything, right? So again, the more the more initiative that a family can take is uh, is certainly important here as well. So great questions. Apologize that we couldn't get to all of them, um, but we do want to shout out some of our uh, recent commits here. Uh, so we're going to start uh, on the hoops world. 
uh, with the student athlete from Canada. We got some graphics popping up here. This is Gabby Ford. Uh, her and her family got uh, started with our network uh, right at the beginning of COVID last year. Um, Gabby had a ton of Division One interest on her profile. Ended up choosing North Dakota State University, 6'3", so great size. I'm sure she'll be a force in the post for uh, North Dakota State for years to come. All right, next up here, Olivia Chamberlain. And I, I want to get to something here on Olivia. First and foremost, uh, built a beautiful recruiting profile. I checked it out. One of the better recruiting profiles I've ever seen. No doubt that got her interested uh, from some college coaches. But she's from New York. She is going to be a wildcat going to the University of New Hampshire last uh, next year. Excuse me. Uh, track and field, right? That is a Division One program out of the America East Conference. Uh, but you know, not only did Olivia take some time to build that nice looking recruiting profile so that college coaches can learn more about her, that did draw her some attention. Uh, by that, I mean she showed up in 1,131 independent searches for college coaches looking like for athletes like her, right? That is what this is about. This is about exposure, right? And then beyond that, she had 124 programs following her recruiting profile right? That didn't just happen out of nowhere. That is because she took the time to fill it out. She was engaging with these coaches and these coaches said, you know what, Olivia, we really like what you're doing and we know you're serious about this. We're very, very interested. So congratulations to Olivia on her uh, accomplishments. Awesome. We got a 2022 grad here wrapping things up. So Steven Zielke's a uh, junior right now. He'll be heading into a senior year next year. Already made his college decision going to SUNY Cortland uh, to play lacrosse. Uh, very similarly to Olivia, Steven's profile was decked out. Um, his family got an early start in the process. They started up with NCSA uh, before Stephen even entered high school. And looking at the results, looking at all the searches, the activity, the emails that were opened, again, being able to see all that activity, Stephen put a lot of time into the recruiting process, found a great school, um, and was able to make that early commitment uh, here heading into his senior year. So again, him and his family put the work in early. Uh, they capitalized on some of these important dates, and he's going to walk into his senior year not having to worry about recruiting and can sit back and enjoy it and not be stressed out and, and freaking out and panicking like uh, like some families I'm sure are as their kids heading into their senior year. So always awesome to see those uh, see those commitments, Danny. Yeah. Uh, and next week, I feel like everybody's going to want to jump in on this. Topic. This is a big topic. Summer camps. We're talking summer camps. We're going to talk about what they are, the impact of those, how to make that uh, really work for you. You know, we talked about it a little bit, the before and after, right. right? So we're going to dive into some details here on summer camps, which is a question we get all the time, like every day. Um, so we're going to, you know, dispel maybe some myths and uh, help you guys really get the most out of those camps. So DK, always good to be on it's here with you. You're a consummate like, professional, yeah. my dude. DK squared here. So we'll That's right. You. That's right. We're back in the mix. I love it. Awesome. Well, appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, we'll be back next Tuesday, 2 p.m. Central, as we are every week. I uh, hope everyone has a good rest of your week.